Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are joined by Gautam Navlakha to discuss the current discourse around Kashmir and also how the valley is faring under the center's rule. So uh, Gautam, as we know, center's rule has been extended for another six months and the speech Amit Shah gave before this uh, extension was granted has drawn a lot of attention, particularly one statement he made about uh, saying that uh, one third of Kashmir is not with India today because of Nehru's mistakes 70 years ago. But even apart from that, Amit Shah said a lot of things about how successful the center has been in administering Kashmir, that uh, development has arrived in Kashmir, there is democracy again, and that militancy is being rooted out. So what do you think of all of this, all the statements Amit Shah has made? There is always, an, you know, half-truths always carry some partial truth and uh, partial silence. Uh, they omit the negative part and they've tried to present a more positive picture of the things. Because if you take each one of them, let's not go into the history part of it because there is a lot that be, many of the people who have been writing on Kashmir have pointed out Congress's role in creating the problem through their mishandling of Kashmir. So let's not go into that right now. But if you look at uh, the question of uh, where Kashmir is today, uh, under not just president's rule but the, or the governor's rule, but also in the last five years, then we get a slightly different picture. Uh, well, democracy is absent as far as Kashmir is concerned because if democracy is just reduced to election, then even election, the only parameter by which uh, Amit Shah defined democracy and its success was talking about the successful panchayat polls in which 74.19% people came out and vote. <laughs> but he was being very selective with his, uh, with his facts because the reality is that only 10% of panchayat wards saw any election or any polling and uh, less than one third of uh, posts of Sarpanch saw any voting. Uh, even in the urban uh, municipal body elections, <clears throat> more than 180 uh, wards went, were places where no polling at all took place. Now, this is not a remarkable success of democracy. It only means that despite the lack of a concerted campaign, by those who uh, espouse uh, Azadi, uh, the people of their own volition, it seems, stayed back and stayed away from casting their vote. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a success for democracy. It's actually uh, a defeat and rather uh, a lack of trust and confidence mm -hmm. in, the, in the electoral process, quite apart from lack of democracy, um, the everyday democracy. I mean, if it, it's, it's your freedom to, to express yourself, freedom to organize and to freedom to hold a peaceful uh, uh, protest. These are all lacking in Kashmir. And that's been something that one has been pointing out for a long time. So, <clears throat> as far as democracy is concerned, I'm unfortunately, Amit Shah is wrong. In, uh, but the selective presentation of facts helped to create an impression that militancy is under control. But you know, this question about militancy under control is also very peculiar. The same figures are also cited by the same government when, it's, when it feels <laughs> that it's necessary to show just the other side, the other picture which is to claim that Pakistan's interference has increased. Mm -hmm. Look, things are going out of control. And it is used to legitimize use of military suppression mm -hmm. and to continue to use military suppression to achieve political ends when we know that it doesn't. So well, let's so look we, at... We know that there are still... The number of youth joining militancy is actually increasing every year, despite them saying that the clamping down on militancy and that In it's fact, what is remarkable, uh, Sarangya, is the fact that if you look closely, Government of India now comes out and says that infiltration in 2019 has been virtually zero. There is just one single encounter in which a Jashe Mohammed militant died. But he was not infiltrating, he was exfiltrating. 
was probably going across, returning to his base camp or whatever. So there has been none. Uh, we also know that Pakistan is now at least reportedly cracking down on its uh, militant so-called assets that India believes is uh, controlled or assets which are owned by the Pakistani military establishment, that it is cracking down on them. Now with infiltration zero, in any case, the infiltration was compared to turn of the century when it ran into it, it, it used to number into thousands. It has come down to two digits mm -hmm. max between 2014 and 2019. But even if this has ended, it only means that this all, all these claims about Pakistan being in total control or whatever is happening is a make-believe mm -hmm. and it's not true. And yet, if 250 to 300 militants, now that the military claims that they own 250 to 300 militants remain, it's not just the number of militants, that obviously it implies that most of them are indigenous local people. So Pakistani's control is, is much less than what it is being touted. The other aspect is, which people don't talk about, is the fact that this is a singular achievement of this BJP government, mm -hmm. that not only did it see Revival of jaish e mohammed which had become defunct in 2003, its revival in 2016-17. But we also have for the first time, again, after uh, more than a decade, that we see return of militancy in Chenab Valley, in Kishtwar, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a sign of, uh, of uh, things being under control. So, this is, I mean, government of India talking with a forked tongue. When it suits them, it talks about how these militants are threatening India's internal security and pose a national security threat. When it suits them, they use the same data to suggest otherwise. This is what we are experiencing right now. So, I think there is a lot which has not been said, which has not been cited, it's that that one should focus on because it's then you get a complete picture. Uh, uh, let me end by just pointing out that the remarkable thing is that everybody talks about as if radicalization is taking place amongst Muslims alone in Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir. Nobody again talks about the fact, not officials, and of course Amit Shah never spoke a single word about it, about radicalization of, uh, of uh, Hindutva elements in Jammu. Hmm. Uh, we have seen it in the case of uh, Kathua abduction, rape and killing of a girl child. We saw it in the vigilante cases of lynchings. Uh, and in the everyday exp ex experience of people, it is noticed by, by, uh, by those who live in Jammu. Uh, that uh, this is something which is unprecedented, which they are going through and experiencing right now. So I don't think mm. things are as hunky-dory as they claim to be. This seems more like an attempt at justifying that uh, the pursuit of the same policy by saying that we have succeeded, we have knocked out militancy, although the numbers remain the same, the force deployment <laughs> remains the same, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. It's to suggest that things are under control and therefore they should push ahead and do the same thing and carry on with the policy of, of, uh, of uh, taking the war to the, to, the, to the other side, so to say. And also what do you think about his claims on development? Because if there really is development, do we see any normalcy returning to the lives of Kashmiris? Do we see schools being open and businesses functioning normally? Is any of that happening as well? Let me cite you two examples to say whether it is possible for development to take place. Now, because of Amarnath Yatra, the government uh, in Jammu and Kashmir announced, or rather the administration announced on two consecutive days, on uh, Monday and Tuesday of, the, of this week, uh, they came out with this order saying that civilian traffic will not ply from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, every day for the next 45 days of as long as the Amarnath Yatra lie. Then the second day, second day on Tuesday they came out with another order which said that railway service from Banihal to Kazikund is going to be halted uh, for next 45 days. Just on 31st March in fact, 31st May in fact, uh, uh, an earlier order 
where civilian traffic had been banned from uh, national highway yeah. for two days of a week had been uh, that came to an end now this is not a sign of normalcy or encouragement to development because what you're doing is that the civilians who want to carry on with their lives they are being prevented from actually moving around moving to the place of work or school children going to uh, educational uh, to schools or colleges uh, people uh, who who do daily wage wages uh, and look for daily i mean work uh, are prevented from traveling to get work where they can so i mean this, if if by development they mean and it seems that amit shah only meant that prime ministers announcement of an 80000 crore packet for kashmir that 80% of the money has been transferred to jammu and kashmir but mere transfer of money from the center to the state doesn't mean development one has to see whether all the projects that the government had promised have come out neither all india institute of management uh, medical sciences uh, uh, you know unit which was supposed to come up in jammu that hasn't come up iit has not come up so i mean what projects are they talking about and if you are disrupting the life by 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 creating hurdles for movement of people on roads how does it in i mean what kind of a development are they talking about so i think there is one has to look closely to see then it's internet has become a joke in in kashmir at a drop of a hat they they freeze they 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 stop the internet now a lot of internet based companies or it based companies which need to avail of uh, high speed internet you know to 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 transfer data from from uh, from one place to another they are prevented from doing it so how does it help development i have not understood i mean if this is what is meant by development and if development can take place bid despite these impediments which the gum the administration itself creates then i like to see the the nature of that development uh, before one you know uh, concludes that there is development taking place and also we see that there's still no talk of the assembly elections happening right now while they talk about democracy and they say that they have created conditions conducive to elections they still held lok sabha elections but there is no talk of the assembly elections yeah well it seems that they wanted the amarnath yatra to get over before they allow assembly elections so we might see assembly elections but there there is another angle to the assembly election uh, it seems from reports that the administration and the bjp definitely which is in control of the administration because it's the center calling the shots there uh, under the president's rule um that they are trying to pre- create a condition where it would be advantage bjp mm-hmm. now for that whatever maneuvering or manipulation has to take place seems to be going on so once that they feel that they are prepared uh, would be the right time as far as the as uh, the government of india is concerned to decide to go in for polls where they are sure of getting uh, a, a majority or being in a position to create a majority in the assembly where they can pitch for their own government so it's not so much it's not so much because of any uh, uh, you know any uh, compulsion that they face that assembly elections have been deferred it's more because they need time to prepare the uh the party and consolidate its position uh, which they plan to do uh under president's rule that uh, the elections have been deferred for the time being so i don't see it as a big any big uh, any big issue as far as uh, for bjp is just a question of timing the proper timing when they'll decide and finally uh, amit shah in his speech also made it clear that any even the, uh, the idea of raising the uh, prospect of holding the promised plebiscite is totally out of the question kashmir remains a part of integral part of india and it will not be allowed to you know even like the idea of it being uh, yeah. 
of it going away from India. Of course, that's not surprising. That has been BJP's stance. But what kind of message does this send to the Kashmiris? Look, we should be clear that what is happening today in Jammu and Kashmir is an attempt at large-scale disruption, uh, especially in Kashmir, where they'd want to do away with the with the established order, uh, the existing wielders of power, get rid of them. That's why you see so many cases that have been filed, income tax rates taking place, cases of corruption being filed against from pro-India to anti-India, uh, leaders of anti-India group, and they're being ensnared in all kinds of cases and things like that. This is an attempt at disrupting and destroying the banning of jamaat islami and JKLF, and especially jamaat islami which again Amit Shah defended, also fits in as part of this pattern uh, to do away with all those who wield any kind of clout of power or influence in Kashmir existing uh, have to be destroyed. Now in any such large scale disruption that takes place, what authorities never realize and reckon with is that every disruption also begets its own resistance. What form and what shape it will take, we don't know. That depends on the extent of this disruption that is being attempted. But that it will goes without saying. And the fear is, and which has been expressed by many people in the administration themselves who are part of the uh, establishment in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, who have expressed concern, at uh, this possibility. And in fact, the former director of uh, Center for Land and Warfare Studies, recently in an article in the Tribune, Gurmeet Kanwal pointed out that government of India would be unwise if they were to pursue this path because if tomorrow it pitches entire, because now with this kind of a disruption, what you do is you do away with every element even those who were earlier stood for India. Now you're going to create a polarization where they'll be on one side and others would be on the other side. In this situation, as Kan Gurmeet Kanwal points out, if the masses were to return to the streets, no matter how large your armed forces and how men, much power that they enjoy, they will not be able to handle that situation. Similarly, people have warned that this is also going to galvanize and in fact give another boost <laughs> to armed militancy and local militancy, not controlled by Pakistan because Pakistan's capacity to interfere has in fact is much exaggerated. It's much far less than what it is or it was once upon a time. So it would be local militancy that is in good. Now, these are, these are things that have not been taken into account. Now, which way, therefore, things will go and move, we st still don't know. But that there will be some reaction, that there will be some form of response, goes without saying. Because as our Prime Minister himself so famously had said, every action has its own reaction. Okay. Thank you, Gautam, for joining us today. And that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching this clip.